riders coming through now towards this dangerous bend of Pilgrim for the first time. Finland going round, Norway there too. And these riders taking this bend so very, very gently indeed. There'll be an awful noise out there of brakes and gears and, and uh, the screaming of the rubber on the rims. But I think the riders having trained around this bend for so many times yesterday that they have... And there they are, there we are, where we expected this, I think. Riders in the middle of the pack have gone down and now the mechanics are going to have to work overtime. I don't see anybody down here from Great Britain at the moment. Liechtenstein certainly. Rider 177, 71 is down there, and that's uh, Klavadetscher from Liechtenstein, so he's having a new back wheel put in. And, uh, well, it looks to you as though what we thought would happen has actually happened. We're coming now to this right-hand bend here. The riders at the back are going to find the pressure going on. And that looks to me as though it, in fact, is Andrei Ivodernikov also up here with the leaders. So it looks as though this first climb has been very, very crucial indeed. The rider setting the pace there was Jens Vegerby of Denmark, followed by... St and look at this pile-up. This has all happened on the bend here, further down the field. And this has been the cause of just one or two riders probably not watching where the road went and may even have tried to have go, go straight on at this point. And there we have another mass pile-up. And my goodness me, how do you sort that one out? As a British rider, Mark Bell is stuck in the middle of it. He's scooting his way through now behind that rider in the white jersey who's running. He's away now, Mark Bell, but of course, now you've got a split, a complete split, and look, they're all tangled up. Some are in the hedge, some can't even get up, and there's other people are hurt. The Belgian there looks to have hurt his elbow or his wrist. He's going to need some medical treatment. So we're waiting now to see the legs of Bernd Drogan appear. There they are, through the trees for the last time. He has now just the steep climb to come up past the golf course. And a good sign he has a good lead is that the referees are not moving on the following cars. Glance over his shoulders there, but I'm quite sure all he saw there was the referee behind him. Termination written all over his face now. This is revenge for Drogan. This is for taking his world title off him for the team time trial, which he'd held with his three teammates for two years and lost it last Wednesday. Now he's going back into the front as the individual amateur champion of the world. And here comes the field now. And I wonder if any of the British riders left here have the strength now to progress to the front. Steve Bauer there in second place for Canada. This is the rider the Canadians thought would do well. He's now in third place. Also here is one of the uh, one of the Swiss riders, and that's Jörg Bruckmann in second place. And marked all the time by the Czechoslovakian riders, Dutchman, and even the Ameri one of the Americans there, Jonathan Eustace. So British riders in that group queue. What do you think of our chances here as we look at Drogan? Well, Drogan, of course, is riding this hill as strong as ever, and he looks set now to take this championship. If we've got some English sprinters there, still Steve Joffin or anybody like that, they are very, very good sprinters at the finish, but they'll need to be well and truly near the front as they come round that final bend, because a lot of these Belgians will certainly be trying to get a medal in this blanket finish. And look at the effort now on the face of Drogan. This last climb, the 12th time of Trundle Hill, is excruciatingly hard. And the gap, you can see Drogan at the top of the picture there, and here he is. And look at the effort now, he's visibly slowing down, the effort all, all so much, and yet he knows if he can make the right-hand corner, as we did with Mandy Jones, he will surely win the gold medal. Well, this surely is the longest climb now for Drogan. He's living on his willpower, he's digging deeply into his reserves because the whole field is coming up the mountain behind him. And in that field are the riders from Great Britain who have had an excellent race in the person of Pete Sanders in the breakaway for the best part of 78 miles. Drogan now approaching the final bend in the 1982 World Championship. That must be the nicest sight of the day for him. Broke clear of the pack, of the breakaway rather, with three laps to go. That's 27 miles, and the puncher right behind him. What a finish this is going to be. Will he hold out to the finish because the puncher coming and Drogan knows it. Here they come now, and they're going to come round that corner inside the Drogan. He's died steadily all the way up this long climb. Is he going to make it to the line as he comes up to the finish? An enormous cheer goes up. Drogan absolutely shattered, crosses, crosses the line, and as the bunch come in here, Led home by Belgium, and that was certainly uh, Francis Vermeulen in second place for Belgium. And the whole field came in, and I think in third place there, 
came Jörg Brugman from Switzerland. Well, that was truly a tremendous ride by the East German. How on earth he hung out for those final few metres, well, we don't know. But what a marvellous performance for him. Fully deserved his medal, away for the final three laps, and it was almost as if he almost misjudged his efforts.